Hey everyone, this is Ruben Quinones. I'm going to share with you the Iverson method. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, vocabulary learning uh, techniques. Uh, it's a fantastic way to learn, to practice words that you've seen before uh, and make sure that you don't forget them uh, quickly. Make sure that you, you keep them in your brain. Um, this right here is an example of a spreadsheet uh, that you can use for the Iverson method. Uh, if you click on this right now, it'll take you to uh, the spreadsheet on uh, Google Drive and uh, you can download it and use it for yourself this exact same uh, spreadsheet if you want to make one for your own on uh, in Excel just you can make five columns um, that are 172 pixels wide and three sections of six that are 38 pixels high so how do we use this Basically, you will um, do a set of six words here, write a set of six words here, and then translate those words to the next co next box. But before you're able to, you are allowed to write them, you must say the words. Why? Because if you can say all six, that means they're all in your brain, at least short term. Then if you can write all six, they're, again, they're in your brain for even more time. So this action this double action of saying and then writing is, is keeping these words in your brain for a good amount of time. Let me show you how um, I've used this in my Spanish class when I'm teaching Spanish. This is um, for uh, sort of end of year one Spanish. And here are the directions. When you're able to translate all six terms in one section from memory, write them in the next column and then proceed to the next six terms. So the trick is you only look at the first six words and you have to say the translation before you're able to write the translation. So I always tell my kids, put the pen down, put the pencil down. Um, first, we'll, we're going to say it. And we've seen this. Maybe we have our book open. We know we can find these words in our list of vocabulary. So they would start from like this. Limpio, sucio is clean and dirty. ¿Qué estás haciendo? What are you doing? Bastante. Let's pretend I forgot this word. Uh, I don't remember. Is it coffee? El dinero. I know that's money. Recibir is to receive. It looks like to receive a little bit. And then cerca and lejos. Uh, I don't remember. Is it tall, short? You would check in your book. No, got it wrong. Okay, let's try it again. Limpio, sucio is clean and dirty. Uh, ¿Qué estás haciendo? Is what are you doing? Bastante. Darn it, I forgot again. Let's look at it. It's enough. Bastante means enough. Don't forget it. Enough. Enough. Bastante is enough. We'll continue. El dinero is money. Recibir is to receive. Cerca and lejos is not tall and short as I thought before. It's actually near and far. But that's only, I've only gotten three words in a row. So let me go back to the top. Limpio sucio is clean and dirty. ¿Qué estás haciendo? Is what are you doing? Bastante is the one that I kept on forgetting. That's enough. And I've gotten already gotten these three. So that's six terms in a row. Next, I would pick up my pen and write clean, dirty, what are you doing? And so this act of writing is, like I said, is doing a couple of things. Number one, it's <clears throat> uh, kind of confirming that I really did know them all. If you use a pencil, of course, you could erase if you, if you actually had forgotten. I'd like to put to receive and near far. And also it's kind of nice. It's sort of proving, it's sort of showing a marker of, of uh, uh, a way of showing that you actually did know these words. Good job with the multitasking there. Oh my. Near and far. Good. Let's go on to the next six terms. I would do this again with cocinar. Pen down. Hacer la cama, lavar los platos, poner la mesa. Sacar la basura en arreglar el cuarto. Again, I have my list somewhere else, not on this page, for the first time going through. And I have to say all six before I can write them. De on to the next one. These six words, I have to say all six before I'm allowed to write them. Now is where it gets good. You can see that I've written the word now in English. I have to go on to back to the Spanish, L1 being my native language, L2 being the target language. So here I'm going from English to Spanish, and I have to remember, I can just cover it up with my hand. Uh, that was my ring, not my finger making that much noise. Cover it up with my hand. Clean, dirty is what? 
uh, limpio and sucio. But if you forget the spelling, then you'll have to check. Limpio and sucio, S and C. Pay attention to that. What are you doing? ¿Qué estás haciendo? But pay attention to the upside down question mark and the two accent marks here. So back to this one, limpio, sucio. I remember that this is S-U-C-I-O or S-E-U-C-I-O. What are you doing? I'm trying to, I'm thinking right now of the upside down question mark and the two accent marks on the E and the A and so on. When you forget here, no problem, it's right there. You can just look and then keep going. Again, once you've said them all and are confident that you can write them all, then you will write them all correctly um, in Spanish. Of course, here I will have written the English translations of these words and then I'm going back again to the Spanish. Now, once you've done this, I, I think I'd like to ca call it for, for the day. That's actually going to take you um, quite some time if you're doing newish words. It's going to take you a while to do that. I call it a day on that, that, that point and do the rest either for homework or you can come back uh, the next day, maybe on a Monday after the weekend, um, and then do the, the remaining two columns like that. So why is this so much more effective than regular flashcards? Well, I'll show you uh, the, the problem with regular flashcards. If I have the word enough right here, I'll have to turn around and go, oh yeah, bastante. Then money. What's money in Spanish? Uh, el dinero. I knew that. Okay. To make the bed, something, something, cama. Oh yeah, hacer la cama. Close, near is cerca. Far, I forget. I don't know. Oh yeah, lejos. Arranged, I don't know. Oh yeah, arreglar the ARR of a range. To take out, sacar, basement, I don't know. El sótano, clean, uh, I don't know. Limpio, oh yeah, dirty, I don't know. Sucio, oh yeah, enough, I don't know. Bastante, oh wait, now you might recognize it. Money, dinero, to make the bed, something, something, cama. Oh yeah, hacer la cama, close, I don't know. So here's the problem is that as soon as you, if you're doing flashcards like this, as soon as you get rid of this card, what are you thinking about now? You're thinking about the word, then it's the next word that's right here. You're not thinking about the word close. You're not thinking about hacer la cama, which was before that. You're not thinking about enough, bastante, which was before that. That's the problem with flashcards, is that you're only thinking of one item at a time, and as soon as you put it on the back, your brain sort of releases that information. And it's gonna, you're going to rely on just recognition of seeing something many, many times. But you're not thinking about it, you're just seeing it, and you don't even need to know that you've recognized it before, that you've seen it before. So think about this. What if I'm doing this? To arrange or to fix is arreglar. To take out is sacar. Basement is el sótano. If I have to think of these three at the same time. Clean and dirty and enough. That's five. Uh, that's six. So if I have to think of all of these six words at the same time, you can see that you have to think about each word for longer. Right? So that's the same idea behind this. By doing six words at once, you're, you're guaranteeing that you are holding the, all the words in your brain for at least, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds. And then when you're writing it, again, how long does it take to write all six words? I don't know, maybe, maybe up to a minute, uh, 30 seconds to a minute. Um, no, it shouldn't be a minute, maybe 30 seconds. Um, so again, you're guaranteeing your brain that your brain is holding that. And I think there's a sort of breakthrough uh, when you hold something in your brain for more than just five seconds, it's going to stick in there much, much longer. There's a sort of this, uh, this, this, um, uh, the phonological loop, which is that sort of echo in your brain. You have to break through that, and this forces you to break through. So in the next video, I'll show uh, a demonstration of how I actually use this um, with other languages, with Swedish and Farsi, and I'll show a, a live demonstration. So thanks for watching.